Hello, welcome to Winged Horse Designs. I'm Donna Goodwin. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator located in Brookings, South Dakota. I have a fun emboss resist technique card for you today. Um, it takes a little bit of time, so I'm going to go ahead and jump in and get started. And it only takes time because I've added so many different layers. So I'm going to that's not what I wanted to do. That's what I want to do. Um, so here's a better look at it. We're going to do some emboss resist. So we're going to take a piece of white and we're going to emboss in clear embossing powder. And then we're going to start layering on some inks on top of that. So I'm going to set this up in the corner. The measurements are in the description for what you're going to need. We're going to start with a card base. I'm using pool party that measures five and a half inches by eight and a half inches scored at four and a quarter. Any of you who follow me on a regular basis know that this is my favorite card size because it fits perfectly in our envelopes from Stampin' Up. And then I brought, you'll need another piece, a little matte piece. I'm using Granny Apple Green. It measures three and seven eighths of an inch by five and one eighth of an inch, or just slightly larger than this piece, which measures three and a quarter inches by five inches. I have already done the embossing to save us some time. You'll need a piece of scrap for our sentiment, and then a piece that's five, four inches by five and a quarter inches for the inside of our card. So I'm gonna take these two pieces and set them aside. The stamp set that I chose to use is Dragonfly Garden. It's in the annual catalog. And we're just gonna use this clump of wildflowers and one, I believe it's this dragonfly that I chose to use. And then I like the sentiment, I love the sentiment, make good things grow grow all year long. So we're going to use that one. And then some little dragonflies on the inside of our card. I am using a lot of ink colors for this. You don't necessarily have to use this many ink colors. I just, I'm ready for spring. So I brought in a lot of ink colors. I'm using Daffodil Delight, Polished Pink, Parakeet Party, Pool Party, and Garden Green. And I'm going to layer a lot of those colors up. In order to do this part, I embossed in Versamark and clear embossing powder. So I used clear, which makes it really difficult at this point to see it unless you get it just right in the lighting. But as we start adding color, you'll see that it starts to pop. So I'm going to set everything aside except the piece we're going to be working with. And I'm going to bring in some scrap paper to protect my work surface here. Keep, try to keep this up in the corner. I'm using some old blending brushes that I have from before Stampin' Up! came out with them because I like this really tiny one. And I so it has some smaller sizes that I really like. So I'm using those today. These actually came either from the dollar store or Walmart in the makeup section. So I'm going to start with Daffodil Delight. I like to start with my lightest colors and work to my dark colors, and I'm just going to rub it across the ink pad and pick up some ink. And then I'm going to rub that ink on top of the embossed pieces. So I'm going to highlight the body of my dragonfly. And you just use as much or as little as you like. And then I'm going to do a little, well, I'm going to come back and do that later. So to clean that brush, I'm just going to, the ink just sits on the top of the bristles. So I'm just going to rub it off and then I'm going to come in and pick up polished pink. Actually, let's come back with this stuff. I'm going to add a little more yellow going out from the wings. Then we'll come in with polished pink. And I'm going to pick up some polished pink and I'm going to go over the wings. And you can see, even though it started out kind of in a blotch, um, the more you rub, the more it, uh, the darker the color becomes, the more intense the color becomes, and the more it kind of blends itself out. I'm gonna get, try to get it on the tip here so that I can do my cornflowers. And I'm not gonna worry about getting my flowers exact because this technique isn't about being exact. So I'm going to do my three little flowers. I'm 
and then the other. Actually, there's four little flowers. There's one here. And you can see as you start putting the color on, then you can see that embossing. So that looks good. I'm going to clean this off again. And actually, an inky rag works even better because it really gets that ink off those bristles. So if I just take a really dirty inky rag and really rub it, it takes that off of there even better than rubbing it on the paper. I'm going to go back to my yellow and I'm going to highlight these flowers a little bit as well. So I'm just kind of going around the flowers, trying not to mix the yellow with the pink too much. But just to kind of give them a little bit of a glow. And I'm going to come down a little bit across these stems as well just to kind of give them a little glow. And I'm gonna put these two colors away. And I'm gonna start with Parakeet Party. Take my inky rag and clean off my brush. I'm still using the little brush so that I can get in and get a lot of detail. And I'm going to pick up the pull part. And you can drag it or you can roll it around in a circle, whatever works best for you. And I'm going to come in and get these green leaves in here. And then I'm going to work on the rest of these stems. And you can see they're already starting to pop. And you just keep adding color and adding color to get what you want. So I'm adding quite a bit of the even though the parakeet party is pretty light, I'm adding quite a bit of that in here. And then I'm going to start by coming around this way. But I'm going to move on to a larger brush. And I'm starting off my paper and coming onto my paper. And then I'm going to catch these this side here and a little bit up into this corner. And as you get the brush loaded a little bit more, it starts getting easier. You don't have to apply as much pressure. But the more pressure you apply, the darker the color. You just keep going over it and over it and over it again. Then I'm going to clean this off and switch to Pool Party for my sky. I'm going to leave the Parakeet Party open just in case I decide to add more green. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to fill in these white spaces with Pool Party. I will probably need to re-ink my pads after this because I'm pulling quite a bit of ink off of them. And 
This is a wonderful, wonderful technique in the fall with fall leaves. You could use sponge daubers if you don't have blending brushes. I like the blending brushes because it just gives you softer blending. Kind of gives you a much softer color and the colors blend together better with the blending brushes and more smoothly than they do with um, sponge daubers. I think that's enough blue. And I'm actually so happy with that green. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that up. And now I'm going to come in with garden green and I'm going to darken up the bottom down here. So I'm going to switch to yet a bigger brush. And I just re-inked this one so it should be pretty dark. And I'm just going to add some depth along the bottom. You can see that there is quite a bit of ink because I have re-inked this. And so I won't need to apply as much pressure with this one. And I'm going to come up the side. I'm going to bring in a little bit of darker green in here as well. And so right now you have all of these colors and your embossing piece looks a little bit on the muted side. I'm gonna come in with my rag or you can use a paper towel or something and I'm gonna gently rub over the embossed part. And that's gonna help that white card stock come back through and really pop. And I'm not rubbing real hard, just enough to take that ink off because the ink didn't stick to the embossing powder. getting really cloudy here so it's, the lighting is starting to change very rapidly. So we're going to try this and hopefully it won't be too distracting. Add a little bit more light there. And there's the base of our piece. Come over here a little bit better and you can see it a little bit better. So there's the base of our piece. And now we just simply need to start putting it together. So for the inside, I chose polished pink again for my little flowers. If you like the videos that I upload to share with you different card ideas, please do like, comment, share, and or subscribe. Whatever platform you're watching from determines whether it's a subscribe or a follow. But I'd love to see your comments and your ideas. So I did the inside with polished paint. That's all I did. Again, I like cards where I can just write whatever. I'm going to bring garden green back in. Bring in a piece of scrap white. There, I think that's a little bit better light. Oh, we're just going to stamp it right there in the middle. Now I'm bringing in the rectangle postage stamp punch. And I got it a little bit too far this way, so we're just going to trim just a smidge off this right side so that I can slide it in and get it lined up a little bit better. You don't want to get too close to that edge necessarily, but you don't want to be too far away either. And you notice I'm just barely got a hold of this edge. When that happens, just take a post-it note and create yourself a little handle. And I'm going to slide that in and get that lined up. And I'm just going to punch that piece out. And it's kind of stark white against there. So let's bring that pool party ink back in. You could take sponge daubers or 
even the blending brushes if you wanted to add some ink around the edges. I'm just going to drag it across the car ink pad. And then we have a little bit of ink directly on the bottom of that. Let me see if I can add in even a little bit more light. Lighting is changing very rapidly this afternoon. Although you may or may not be watching it in the morning. It'll be uploaded in the morning. So now we can just simply put all of this together. So I'm going to bring in our card base. Glue the inside in. There's several different places you can find me, actually. You can find me on my website that is Winged Horse Designs. You can find me on Facebook at Winged Horse Designs, as I'm trying to get this glue going. You can find me on YouTube at Winged Horse Designs. You can even find me on Instagram at Winged Horse Designs. I am not on Pinterest yet. Uh, someday. I have my hands full just keeping up with these platforms. And if you don't already have a demonstrator and you're in the United States, I'd love to be your demonstrator. This happens to be my March horse code. So I'm just putting the inside in and then we'll work on the front. So we're gonna glue this to our thin mat. I like the really thin mats. It seems to be just enough to finish off the piece and keep it from looking like it's just kind of floating in air. And I'm going to glue this one down flat. So this card, since I'm not going to put any gems on it, is a perfect card to go in the mail without extra postage because there's nothing to catch on it at the post office. Now I'm looking and these margins seem a lot different and I think I might know why. I just pulled it from the stash, assuming that it was five and a half by eight and a half, and it's actually five and three quarters. So I just have a little bit extra up at the top on both the inside and the outside, and that's okay. I think it still looks nice. And then we'll pop this up with some dimensionals, which were here just a moment ago. Now this card will need to be in a larger envelope. You can make a custom envelope or you can put it in an invitation size envelope, a five by seven envelope would work perfect. It'll be a little bit large, but it'll still work. And I'll put our little label there. And there we have a fun emboss resist card. I got a little bit brighter on this card than this card, but that's okay. Because that gives you two different things to look at. I hope you enjoy this technique. I hope you'll try it out for yourself. And let's see, Monday. Monday for the live at 10 a.m. Central Time is a watercolor lift. So we're going to do something similar to this. We're going to put color down. We're going to emboss and clear. And then after it dries, we're going to lift the color off. And so only the color will show underneath the embossing. So I hope you'll join me Monday at 10 a.m. Central Time when I go live with the watercolor lifting technique. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. And I'll see you Monday. Happy trails.